morning, guys. Now I'm talking and you're not listening. That is a big problem. Man, I just got off that call and that guy that I was just talking to, he just did not understand a word that I was saying. Those people that I was just talking to just a minute ago, they were talking to me, but I didn't understand a thing that they were talking about. Do you ever hear yourself saying that? Yeah, today's topic is a little bit serious. Um, and that probably sounded quite serious. Man, you're I'm talking and you're not listening to me. Um, so today I wanted to talk about this because it is um, super, super important and it rolls across every single thing we do in life, whether it be the way in which we communicate with our children, whether it be the way that we communicate uh, at work, in sales, so on and so forth. Um, what I'm about to talk about today, which clearly is about listening, um, is going to um, you know make you a lot of money if you listen, listen up. But not only is it going to make you a lot of money, it is actually going to help you have really successful successful relationships with your uh, your partners, your children, and everybody else around you. So that's the topic of today's discussion. Um, I know you probably like opened up the screen today and went, oh my God, what the heck is she on about? She's telling us, she's talking, and you guys are not listening. So welcome to today's session. Um, it's always light and breezy when you jump on these. We are streaming right now on Facebook and also YouTube, and you're probably listening to this too, potentially on a podcast. So welcome to today's Unlock Show. I'm Tracy Wilson, and it is my absolute pleasure to have you guys here with me today. Um, the topic doesn't really need a lot of introduction after that, right? So, you know, I want to talk about um, listening and the art of listening and why it's super, super important that we get really, really good at this. Before I um, jump into it all, I'm just going to click over here and just make sure that... Uh, that I can actually see you guys, that there's some people here um, actually watching today and listening to what I'm going to be talking about, and that uh, you can actually communicate with me. So if you're watching on Facebook or elsewhere, you can actually type in the comment section. I'll actually see those, so I'll be able to communicate with you, and I will be listening. So I will make sure that I pay attention, and I'm looking at the comments, and I will make sure that I am responding to you. So let's get stuck in. And like I said, um, this is a topic that is super important. Um, I've been a, a sales coach for many, many years in my um, in my previous life as a, um, a, a sales coach and mentor inside of a very large uh, organization. And I coach a lot of people to listen so that we could obviously make sales. Um, and some of you are probably thinking, man, I don't even like doing sales. Um, I can tell you today that this is a big, big part of every single element of your life, whether you like it or not. We all have to, if we've got two ears and they work, um, which most of us are blessed to have, we want to make sure that we're actually using them to our uh, best of our ability and to our advantage. And it's in the listening that most of the money actually can be made and also the relationships can be built. So extremely, extremely important. Um, so Let's just kind of kick in and uh, and just talk about some statistics. Hi, Reza. Um, I'm seeing a heap of you guys on here today. Appreciate you guys being here. Um, so let's kick in. But, um, you know, we're talking about um, listening. And I, I saw a statistic, and the statistic said something like that given that we all listen, so you would think that we all would all be pretty good at it. Um, the sad reality is that most of us are not very good at it. In fact, most of the research is actually suggesting that most of what we actually listen to, we're really only hearing somewhere between 50 to 25 to 50 percent of it. So if you think to put that into perspective, today's show is like a 30 minute segment. Um, if you listen to the show for 30 minutes, the reality is that you're probably only going to be hearing or really listening or paying attention for half or 25 percent of that. So that being said, have you ever wondered why maybe your children or even your, you know, your team members, you're constantly like, man, I've told them that before. Why didn't they get it? And you would have also heard the saying that we need to repeat something, like particularly in a marketing sense, nine times you've got to repeat it over and over and over and over again until somebody actually hears it. This is this is why. And a few weeks ago on the show, I talked about the statistic of us having something like somewhere between 50 
and 60,000 thoughts a day. So you kind of couple all of that, the thoughts that are going through your head and you trying to pay, or the person trying to pay attention to you and listen to what you're saying, they are having to compete with all of those thoughts and all of the, you know, distractions of looking out the window and, you know, maybe listening to some side chatter and so on and so forth, and maybe even trying to preempt what you're going to be saying next. So those are all the things that you are competing with when you're trying to get the message across, but equally when you are on the receiving end trying to listen, hear, and to understand what somebody is actually uh, tr you know, telling you. So I want to talk about this in the context of both business, but also family and in your life. Um, and like I said right at the beginning, this is super, super important. And the thing that I also want to, um, to make point of is that this isn't just about making money. If we don't use our listening skills and we're not active in utilizing those, you're leaving a lot more on the table than just money. So one of the things that um, I've been, I've thought about this a lot. And one of the things that I've done with my family, even when they were like really teeny tiny, and it started out um, with my, probably my OC of them not wanting to uh, make a mess around the house, you know, not walking around with food. So one of the things that we always do, and we still do to this day, is every night when we have dinner, we sit down at the dinner table together as a family. And what I have found by doing just that simple task each and every day with your family, and even with your children at a young age, that is the time where you put everything down. Technology goes away, TV gets turned off, and you pay attention to one another. You enjoy the meal together, but you're also having conversation about what's gone on in their day. Um, and I can tell you that certainly my experience has been by doing that and making a, I suppose it's become a tradition. You don't come to my place without sitting down at the dinner table and us actually having a conversation about what's been going on. It will help you to build a really solid foundation for your family and it will continue to open up those lines of communication, but not only allowing people to speak, but really listening to what they are talking about. So from a family perspective, I think it's super and super important. Um, if, you, if you're somebody that, you know, has TV dinners and sits, sits with your dinner on your knee and watches television, then I would encourage you to, you know, give this a go, set the dinner table and just get around it and have a really good conversation with uh, your children and your family. Because Someone's saying here, best memories um, are created there. A absolutely, I would agree with that. And I'm somebody that enjoys to cook and I love to cook for other people and have them around the dinner table so we can have a good old uh, chin wag. Secondly, on the other flip side of that is obviously how this listening piece comes into play when you're in a business sense. So like my little intro was like, you know, you're you're not listening to me. Um, and I know that I, you know, I said it like that. And you probably thought, man, she's, she's done that before. Um, and I think I have once or twice uh, come out with that look and that, you know, I'm trying to talk and you're just not listening to me. Um, and often in relationships, you know, particularly with your partner, you can feel that way when you're not feeling as though you're being heard. So I, again, I want us to look at this from, uh, from two points of view. One is from a communication perspective of when you're communicating, making sure that we're really clear with the message that we want to get across. And secondly, that we're actually really listening to what somebody is saying and then use a lot. I'm going to give you some skills and some things that you can do to really to help really help you to understand what the person is saying. Because as um, you know, as we get busier and busier in our lives and we've got more and more technology and information flying at us, it's really easy to try and go to the, the quick switch and try and get information out um, and listen as fast as we can. And what happens with that is we start to overlay our own beliefs, our own judgment, and we start thinking about, well, what's the next question that I can actually ask? So super, super important um, that we exercise these skills. And I would go as far as saying um, that in a, in a sales environment or in your business, it would be the number one skill that you need to get very, very good at because in the listening lies the dollars is what I'm going to say. In the listening lies the dollars because that will enable you to really listen intently and and then answer uh, in a way that enables that person to really feel like they're heard and that you understand them and that you're the right person to be working uh, with them. So I'm going to give you a few little um, little tips. Uh, I mean, firstly, the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you're actually paying attention. 
So often, um, you know, and again, I put my hand up and I can say that I have been guilty of this at times and it's something that we have to continually work on. But, you know, you you, you might hear somebody say to you, um, are you listening? Uh, I, I've said that before or... Um, you know, you might be listening, but not really paying attention. So to really listen and to hear what the person is saying, you need to make sure that you give them the, your undivided attention, that you are focused on them, that you are looking at them, that you are actually engaged in the conversation and you are not trying to preempt what is the next thing I'm going to say and throw it into this conversation. I want to ask you this question too. Have you ever been with somebody who just does not stop talking? Um, you know, and maybe, you know, you might be one of these people that just has to try and fill the gap. Yes, Robert, two ears and one mouth for an absolute reason. Um, dead right. We need to make, you know, we use these two things um, to ensure that we can we can listen really carefully and we do most of the listening and a lot less talking. Um, but if you've ever sat you know, with somebody who talks a lot and you won't have heard the saying, this is where the saying comes, you can't get a word in edgewise because the person just does not stop long enough to even allow you to interject and uh, to to get your thought out there. So really, really important that you allow people to, you know, to talk, that you listen, you're paying attention to them and you allow them to finish all of their sentence. Um, and I'm talking about this because, you know, I've been there, I've been guilty of this, and I've had to work on this really hard over the years and had to coach people to the point where um, they understand that in a, any kind of conversation, you want to be listening the vast majority of the time and you want to be speaking, you know, a lot less. And in a sales environment, we even go to the point of like 80, 20, 90, 10 um, and I would go as far as saying that that would even apply to an interview style situation. You want to make sure that you are talking a lot less of um, a lot less of the time. So I've got a few questions coming up here. What do you do when somebody is defensive? Well, I mean, it's really, really interesting question that um, because often, you know, when we come to our conversations. You, you come to the conversation with an intention. Um, so whenever I'm going into anything, and sometimes it, you can be a little bit nervous about, you know, how is this conversation going to go? Particularly if you're um, if you're somebody who really doesn't like conflict, and there can be, you know, there are situations where conflict um, happens, right? So the first thing I do is make sure that I'm going into whatever that conversation is with the right intention and the right energy. If you move into any kind of conversation with the wrong type of energy, you want to think about listening as being, yes, we have two ears to hear, but you also have all these other senses. And not only are you, you know, you're listening with your eyes and your ears to see what is someone's body language like. And often we can diffuse the situation by adjusting the way in which we approach the the conversation ourselves with our own body language with our own tone of voice with the words in which we are using to try and get our message across and if we can allow that person to speak first and you have this moment of you kind of like got to put a big zip on it and um, put the zip on and say nothing to allow the person to get it off their chest often that will um, also help to diffuse any, you know, hostile or defensive type situation and not coming at it from a point of, you know, judgment of I've got to get in, but, 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 but you're saying this, but it's this and, and I'm and I'm coming at it from a, a perspective of I've got to have the last say or be right. Um, you know, there is no sense in trying to win in a, in a situation like that. What you're trying to do, the winning for all, is that you come out of that conversation with on a on an um on a nice, even, you know, playing field, so to speak, and that you are able to move forward with some level of, um, you know, of being able to move forward and, and not being stuck in that conversation. So, um, yeah, those were just some of the things that I, I have, you know, digressed a little because that was a, a question that came up. But those are some of the things that I've found that have helped me in really good stead over the years. So the first is like paying attention. Um, when you move into that conversation, you want to make sure that you pay attention. When you do that, often even that is enough to, to diffuse any type of hostile situation or a point where somebody is, um, you know, is not necessarily vibing or driving at the same, you know, level that you are. 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to put on here is that you want to show them that you're actually listening. So you want to make sure that you're, again, this all comes down to paying attention, nodding um, and you know, and saying, yes, mm -hmm, I'm listening, you know, making sure that you're actually, they can see that you are paying attention to them. You're not writing things down. You're not looking out the window. You're not having side conversations. Often you can see when somebody is already thinking about something else in their head and not paying attention to you. So super, super important that you show that you are actually listening. And that can come in when you use things like paraphrasing and say, you know, um, reiterating back to them that you've actually understood what they are talking about. So hi guys, I can see Ryan here and uh, I've got a heap of uh, heap of conversation going on in the side chat here. The next thing is like providing feedback and seeking clarification. So this can obviously is applies to all areas of our life, but I'm going to talk now specifically in a business sense. Um, so when when you're providing clarification and uh, set, or seeking clarification and providing feedback, there was a guy by the name of Robert Woodstall, Wood, Wood Small, um, and he said something like this. He said, when you can articulate to a, per, a person's problem better than they can, they automatically and unconsciously credit you with knowing the solution. That is super powerful in a business sense. So again, this is where the listening comes in because when you listen really carefully to what the person has said, and then you're able to reiterate it back to them by saying, okay, so today, Tracy, this is what I've heard. You're telling me this, these are your problems. This is what you are looking to achieve. Have I got that correct? If they say yes, they are going to unconsciously tag you as being somebody who has got the answer. So when you get really, really good at this and you're able to reiterate that back and paraphrase back to the person, it is super, super powerful in a in a uh, in a business and a sales process sense. Um, so I'm just going to look here. A few saying Carl Rogers putting people at the heart of the conversations and more. Absolutely, it's like you know really paying um, paying attention to what that person is saying. Then providing feedback and uh, seeking clarification. So I'm just going to have a look. I've got a few always at these. I always have a few notes. I'm just going to refer back to my notes in here. And um, so seeking clarification. So sometimes also when you're um, when you're paraphrasing with someone, you want to make sure that you're saying things like, you know, I'm hearing you. I can understand what, where you're coming from. Um, you know, let me let me just re paraphrase that and just make sure that I'm actually understanding you correctly. That also helps to to put you in, I suppose, in the driver's seat and that person will really get to understand or feel as though you are listening to them. Because when you paraphrase, you have to have listened to what the person has said in the first instance to be able to reiterate that back to the person in a way that uh, makes them feel as though they are understood. And if you don't understand something, a phrase that you could use is, I may not be understanding you correctly, so I'm going to just reiterate what I think you said. Have I got that right? And that also opens up that line of communication for the person to say, yeah, you've understood me absolutely correctly. And you know that when you move forward, that um, there is no misunderstanding or no none of your judgment or any of your, um, you know, your uh, belief systems being overlaid into what they into what the person is saying. This is really important too. Um, you know, in terms of the way in which we communicate now. So if you think about, you know, me communicating to you, I can speak and I can speak what I can try and, uh, you know, articulate things to you in a way that I want you to understand. But often when you go to the likes of written communication, whether it be text messaging or, you know, on social media and, you know, you might be typing something. We have to remember that often as the listener in that case or the reader of the message, we're overlaying to that message the way in which we're feeling at that time. So if you're not feeling very good and somebody has written something and it may not necessarily have been their intention to have written it in a way that you have interpreted it, it's because you have overlaid the way that you feel and your own beliefs to that conversation. And often that can be where things get um, you know, misconstrued or 
uh, where we have this problem with uh, communication. So jumping on a call and actually having a conversation, a two-way conversation like this, where you get to speak with one another, where you get to see one another, that you get to, you know, understand how that person's feeling from a vibrational level is really, is, is extremely powerful. So um, the next thing that I've got on my list is like deferring judgment. So again, interrupting, um, you know, I'm going to say interrupting is really a waste of time. So when somebody is trying to talk and they're trying to get a message out, when we interrupt them, we're actually not just interrupting their train of thought or, you know, even cutting them off so that the message, the message then limits the um, our understanding. If we don't allow the person to finish their sentence and get out what they were trying to communicate to us, then often you won't have a full level of understanding of what they are also trying to talk about. So that is super, super important that we don't interrupt. And that can often be hard um, and it requires a lot of practice. But one of the things I would get you guys to do um, right now, I'm actually just want to go to the, the audience and ask you guys, like on a again, on a scale of one to 10, I know I ask this question a lot, but I'm just trying to gauge, you know, how good you guys are at this. If you were to rank yourself on a scale of one to 10, as far as how good your listening skills are where would you rank you one being like you're not really very good at it um, 10 being you are awesome at it and you have you know you constantly um, are looking at ways that you can improve your your uh, your listening skills so give me a give me a gauge type to me in the, the chat uh, section and if you're watching this on YouTube or the podcast give me a little um, you know give me some feedback and let me know how you're going because after the show, I'm going to give you some a, a checklist or a tips list, really, um, that will help you to ha to improve in this particular area. Awesome. I've got some people telling me that they're eights. Some are, are telling me um, that they've got some work to do. So allowing the person to finish their sentence before you jump in and interrupt them, even with counter arguments. Again, sometimes it's really, you know, we, we have this this real need to want to get our words out and to share, um, you know, what uh, what we want to get across uh, when in fact we want to make sure that we're really being quiet. Often the beauty is in the silence and in the quietness. Um, and although on a show like this, you know, we can't have those what we call pregnant pauses where I'm quiet for a, you know, a long length of time. When you're in a conversation with some someone, sometimes those are really good because it allows room for new thoughts to come in and room for the person to actually breathe um, and to take in, you know, a new new piece of material that we want to share with one another. So um, we want to make sure that we are really, really exercising a good use of, you know, your um, your listening. Good way to do this is sometimes just to sit down and. Uh, you know, you might even have like a little prompt that is like, okay, it's my turn to talk. Um, in my culture, when you, so I'm New Zealand Māori, and uh, in our culture, when you're on a, we call a marae, so you go to a meeting place, and when the person is talking, we hand around a stick, all right? So it's a big um, a, a stick that we hand out, and that is the talk, we would, let's just call it the talking stick. That gives that person in that moment the opportunity to stand up and talk and speak about, to, to say their piece without being interrupted by anybody else. So it's being, you know, exercising um, a level of respect and uh you know, and and really, really listening to what that person is saying. So you might even want to, like in your family, you might want to get some little prompt. I mean, I've just got a highlighter here because it's on my desk right now. But you know, a talking stick or a something that says, "Hey, it's it's your time to speak, and I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm going to allow you to continue your conversation, um, and to its to its until it's complete, and then I will ask the next clarifying question." Um, these skills will hold you in good stead in every area of your life. I can tell you when you are interviewing somebody, even if you're going for an interview, that interviewer more so or more often than not is trying to see whether or not you're listening to what they are saying. And have you listened to you know information about their company? So it's super, super important and it does go across so many areas of your life that it is not even funny. And when you get really good at this and you allow the time to be quiet 
and to really listen, you will be absolutely surprised at what you hear and be prepared to hear, not just listen. I know as a mother, we get really, really good at, I'm going to say, um, tuning out, you know, hear the white noise. But it's it's super important that we don't have that, you know, tune out white noise um, on all the time. We need to, to remember we get Men, we get really good at this as females. We learned how to tune out to, you know, the cries of children and all sorts of, mom, 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 can you help me with X, Y, Z all the time? So it's important that we also remember when we need to switch our ears back on and ensure that we are actually listening. I'm going to wrap up very, very shortly, but I'm going to tell this little story because the other day, my um, my daughter-in-law daughter-in-law and my granddaughter were here. My granddaughter was like seven years old. And uh, we were, I, I'd sent her away. I said, um, Jada, can you go and get, it might have been my glasses or something like that. And her mum said to me, you've got to be really, really descriptive with what you want her to do. You've got to, like, she doesn't listen. She'll, she'll hear what you're, you know, listen to what you're saying, but she's not really hearing. You've got to step out for her exactly what it is that you want her to do so that she understands and comes back with the right thing. So, um, you know, I thought that was a great story and it just reminded me when I was watching them, um, you know, I was, I was asking her for something and then mum jumped in and said, you've got to be really descriptive. Well, that is the case with everything and it doesn't stop at a seven-year-old. It, this is a two-way thing in terms of communication. It is us being able to communicate really well the messages that we want to get across, so that the so we have the we give the person listening the best possible chance to hear what we are saying and do what we want what we're wanting them to do. And secondly, we need to put our listening ears on. Um, and not have them painted on. I know I've said that to my kids a few times. I don't know about you, but you know, are your ears painted on? They're on there for a reason. You need to be listening. So we need to make sure that we are actually listening um, to the best of our ability, paying attention, leaving judgment aside, allowing the person to finish their sentences. And I can assure you, you're going to have much, much better communication. And you will see all the opportunities from a business business sense that will be presented to you in a verbal format. Often it's what people are saying, and it's also what they are not saying that you need to be listening up for. So that being said, guys, I have enjoyed having you guys here. I'm going to do a little bit of social listening right now and just have a look at um, some of the comments that are coming in and make sure I can get over there and, whoa, where's the mouse gone? Get over here and just uh, pull some of these up. So thanks very much, Amber, for joining today. She's saying very true, paying a che paying attention and leaving judgment aside. Super important. Um, who have we got here? Towards a, uh, a person like that. Okay, I'm not quite sure which part of the convo conversation that was about because um, I was thick in, uh, thick in the middle of talking, um, which was not seeing what was going on in the chat box at that particular time. So there's a good example of the things that we need to be doing all at the same time to really, really listen. Um, Who's this? What do we got here? My ex-husband made a big deal of that when I needed him to. Listen, I would touch his arm and say his name. He would give me a hundred percent. If I didn't um if I didn't do that, all bets were off. Yeah, we we learn to um to to see and understand what are the what are the ways that we can get people to listen to us. Um and it doesn't matter, like I said it, right at the beginning, say it with Part of sales is absolutely listening, and uh, you would be um, deluded if you thought that sales weren't weaved into every single thing we do um, in communication throughout every part of our life. Whether you're getting up in the morning and you're, you're you know, trying to convince your husband to make you a cup of coffee, something as simple as that, you know, you, you're using your listening and your uh, your communications and sales skills to get people to do that. So. You know, it's super, super important, um, this whole message today. I know I started out with saying, you know, I'm talking and you're not listening. And I'm hoping that today you have captured more than 25 or 50% of what I've been talking about in this conversation. And when I come back uh, next week, which I'll be back on Tuesday, uh, American time and Wednesday, Australia and New Zealand, I'm actually going to be delving deeper into this as far as a uh, conversations go in sales for 
business. So when you listen up on Tuesday, I will be giving you exact steps and the reasons why you need to apply this to your business. And I'm going to give you basically a 10 minute script that is going to help you close high ticket clients in a really short space of time. So I'm going to uh, make sure that I cover that off and it's going to be next week. So thanks very much, guys. You've been watching Tracy Wilson and this is The Unlock Show. Like I said, I'll be back again next week. Make sure that you uh, chat with me inside of the success for success. Blah, 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 getting all tongue-tied today. The uh, Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group on Facebook. That's where you can hang out with us and ask more questions after the show. So thanks for joining me. It's been my absolute pleasure to have you guys here as always. And I'll see you again next week. Have a great day. Bye.